Welcome to the Divine Fellowship. <laughs> Make yourselves at home. <laughs> Not yet. Well, last night, I mentioned to a couple of people, I had no clue what I was going to do today because I hadn't received inspiration yet. Well, unbeknownst to me, they did a prayer meditation for me. <laughs> so this is not my fault. <laughs> so nothing had come to me by it this morning. And so, did my own little prayer meditation. And you know, it used to be when, when I would not have something ready for you, because it's really important for me to have something ready for you. This is, this is such a sacred time for us. <clears throat> In the past, I would go, please send me something. I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I'm a little less spun up about it now. This, we've been doing this for 16 years or so. So now it was like, I'm ready. Please reveal to me what you would like me to share. So my mind kind of rolls through things because I think that's how spirit connects with us and communicates with us. Running things through our heart, running things through our mind, pondering, being open. Somebody will say something to us that triggers something, a memory or an experience, whatever. There's lots of ways spirit communicates with us. Um, I kind of like the good book. It kind of communicates with me too, but that may not be your path. So, any hoosies, I was kind of just sitting there being really open, and I thought, well, if this were the last message that I were to ever give you, what would it be? And I thought, oh my gosh, I could, I could talk to you about developing your intuition. That would be really cool. I could talk to you about Jesus. That would be really cool. I could talk to you about uh, crystal and structures within the body. I could talk to you about past life stuff. I could talk to you about healing. I could talk to you about, and the list went on and on and on and on and on. And I thought, <laughs> okay, let's narrow that down a bit. <laughs> what would that look like if I could narrow that down a bit? And I came up with something that I didn't know I was going to come up with. Because what came to me was that if I could communicate to you one thing, it would be love. Not my love. I'm human. I, I love the best that I can, but, you know, I'm not perfect. So, if I could communicate to you divine love, oh my gosh, that would be profound. And so I asked Spirit, how, how Spirit, how can I communicate that to you? And what came back to me was a very interesting thought. That the eyes are the windows of the soul. And that we as a community, including you, wherever you may be, communicate that loving presence with our eyes, what we behold and what we allow to behold us. Have you ever noticed when someone smiles but their eyes don't light up? Yeah, babies don't, babies not smiling with their eyes. But when someone smiles with their eyes, their face doesn't have to move. And then there's Phil, <laughs> yes. who gets this little mischievous little glint. <laughs> and that's a whole other story. And then I thought I would like to connect with you on a divine level and connect with your soul on a divine level and open a passageway by which love is exchanged. And then I thought, you know what? We need to prep for that. Because if you're not ready, if I'm not ready, it's not going to feel comfortable. Have you ever had somebody stare at you? 
Ooh, creepy. Get away from me. So let me share this with you. The first time I felt that divine love wasn't from my parents, wasn't from my brother, wasn't from my spouse, wasn't from my child. Um, I was involved in a session where I was doing a healing and a, and a, uh, a reading session, an intuitive session. And I felt the presence of love beyond words. And the words that came out of my mouth weren't words that I would use, but they felt inspired. And when we turned the recorder back on, oh my gosh, what was that? Because we both could feel it. Turn the recorder back on and the, the tape had just stopped. <laughs> so there was nothing on the recording. Um, so I thought, well, I, I, wonder, I wonder if I could get that same message again. And before I even finished that, the words came back out exactly the same words. With exactly the same feeling. And it was the first time I grasped the concept of divine love. Human love... There's always a condition attached. I love you if you're this, or I love you if you're that, or I love you because you make me happy, or I love you because you're handsome, or I love you because you're pretty, or I love you because this or that about you. But divine love is this pure essence of acceptance plus compassion plus genuine joy for you. I want to share with you, as a result of that, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite Bible passages. I don't say favorite anymore because I have too many. But here. This is Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I'm convinced. I'm convinced. I hope you've become convinced. I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let me break that down again. I'm convinced that death shall not be able to separate us from the love of God. I'm convinced that life Stuff happens, but that can't separate us from the love of God. Angels, well, not that they would, but even, even angels can't interfere with that love. They could only amplify it. Principalities, often um, beings that are not of the light, can be referred to as principalities. They're also referred to as powers in other things. Principalities can also refer to areas, so like counties, but it's divine, divine areas. So you can't leave a divine area. Even a divine area, a sacred space, cannot <coughs> separate you from the love of God. Where we are right now is a sacred space. You step out of here, you're not separated from the love of God. Got it? Does that make sense to you? No things present, whatever you're experiencing right now. Nor things to come. Future. Some people think America's going to heck in a handbasket. People think other countries are going to heck in a handbasket. Whatever's going on cannot separate you from the love of God. Nor powers. Whether that's governmental powers or that's spiritual powers things that are not of the light, they shall not be able to separate us from the love of God. <coughs> Nor height. Height? You can't get too high. You can't, nor depth. You can't get too low. So the highs and lows of life. How many people have had a, one of those weeks this week? <laughs> I've already been talking to people who've had highs and lows. That shall not be able to separate you from the love of God. Nor any other created thing. Nor any other created thing. There was love, and then there was created things. 
nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I have another companion passage I want to read. And this one, I'm going to have to translate this one too. This is complicated. Actually, I'm not going to translate it. I'm going to defer it to another day. Verses 6 and 7, chapter 5 of 1 Peter. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. Okay. Humble yourselves. I could do a whole month's worth of message on humble yourselves. What that's supposed to mean, how to do that, what that looks like, the value of that. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God. I could do a month's worth of messages about the mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you at the proper time. Well, there's a whole other series. So, I'm not going to do that today. How fun is that? We don't have to know everything. Here's what I want you to pay attention to. Casting your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. Last second service that we did, we did a process by which we cast our cares uh, upon him. Cast your anxiety, your cares. Because he cares for you is the phrase I want you to remember. That's what's in my heart. That's this divine love. He cares for you it is not dependent upon your behavior. Your behavior helps you like yourself better. Your behavior helps you tune in better. When we do things that are unkind, dishonorable, um, and critical, negative, that hurts us. Doesn't hurt divine spirit. Can't be harmed by that. When it's all love, all the time, it just hurts us. Okay? So, with that in mind, I've got two more things to do. Time's going. Okay. So, what I want us to do is I want to share with you now an opportunity for you to get clear in a sacred space, okay? Because the worldly person that we are cannot comprehend or conceive of the love that is being expressed towards you. We get all flibberty-gibberty about this and that and the other thing. And it's that flibberty-gibberty stuff, there's nothing out there that can separate us from the love of God. But the crap we put in here can Right? So let's shift this noodle bowl and let's clear some stuff out. Okay? In order to do that, we'll want to clear it out of the whole body. Because the noodle bowl affects everything. The melon. The noggin. It affects our heart space. It affects our self-esteem. It affects our path. So I had a vision, and I, I taught a class about five years ago about this, and I want to share the basic principle with you now, that <clears throat> the energy being that we are that resides within the physical form requires some maintenance now and then. It requires filling it with spiritual understanding and spiritual truth. If we cram a bunch of negative thoughts in there, guess what's going to happen? We're going to have that negative energy floating around in our system. Okay? So it's important to realize that the spirit within this physical form uses the physical form in order to clear. Okay? So we're going to work spirit and physical together and get clear. You're all aware you have a physical body, and you have the energy field around your body, your aura. 
within that auric system, within <coughs> that energetic construct, there is a venting system. This is not it. <laughs> Darn it, I like that sometimes. This venting system has portals in your energy field. And we're already being programmed to expel the negativity because our spiritual beings cannot harbor that negativity and become aware and hold this divine love simultaneously. Okay? Sometimes the body and the spirit together are trying to vent this stuff and as a result little tears can happen in our energy field. We're going to heal that today and we're going to create some portals by which this venting can happen naturally, automatically, without any restriction, without you losing energy. Uh, there's a lot of energy workers in the room uh, and you've seen people who are just drained because they're just, all the energy is just blown out. Well, they probably have vented negative stuff unknowingly and not have a restrictor valve or not having a flapper duty on the end of their vent and it just keeps venting. Okay? Now when we vent and use this technique, we feel better for a little while. But guess what? We haven't really processed anything. So pretty soon we have to do this again. Only more. Then we have to do it again. Only more. So it doesn't really work. So this is a much better system. It's very effective and it's very calming. Very powerful. Okay? And this is just to precede and set you up for the moment in which we're going to exchange this divine energy. Okay? <laughs>